If you know me, you know that I'm not a huge fan of Mary Stuart, the real historical character, but I will make a video on her to explain why. Um, but it doesn't mean that I don't recognize her strength and it doesn't mean that I don't recognize that uh, she can be a very intriguing uh, historical character um, and that she has lots to teach us as well. In this review of the movie Mary Queen of Scots, I want to tell you why I think that this scene ruined the whole movie. Okay, so there were no meetings between Elizabeth I and Mary Stuart. They never met. It doesn't mean, obviously, that Mary Stuart never asked for a meeting. She asked repeatedly to meet with Elizabeth I. She wanted to explain herself to her. She wanted, as she claimed, to try to find a way for them to overcome their difficulties and overcome uh, their rivalry. While she's saying all of this, we have to remember that Mary Queen of Scots is someone who never respected Elizabeth I of England. And what I mean by that, what I mean by respect, is that she never recognised Elizabeth being the true queen, the true heir to the throne, the true queen of England. So when Elizabeth became queen in 1558, Mary Queen of Scots and her husband, Francis the Second, when they became king and queen in 1559, they used the court of arms of England. They used the title of queen and king of England. And though there were like explanations for this because of the history between the two countries, the fact that they used the exact court, same coat of arms were a true insult to Elizabeth, who kept asking for them to stop doing that. She kept complaining about it to uh, the French ambassador and it created tensions from the very beginning of Elizabeth I's reign. And during all that time, Mary Queen of Scots never agreed to stop wearing that coat of arms, stop wearing the title of Queen of England, and the tensions just grew. So when, you know, when Mary Queen of Scots uh, started getting in trouble in 1568 uh, in her own country and she had to flee to England, when she asked for an audience, when she asked for help from Elizabeth, there were already some tensions and some rivalry between the two queens, and it was not easy for Elizabeth to grant that audience. But also, quite frankly, it was not safe for her to grant that audience. I'm going to discuss not only why this scene ruined, and, and I'm going to be precise about why I think it ruined the movie, but it doesn't mean that I don't like some parts of the movie, or that I don't like some parts of that scene. And what I would also like to do is to discuss with you how we could have made that scene much better in terms of dialogues. So here we have like, you know, a scene where we see them uh, you know, from behind, we're behind Elizabeth, she's going to see Mary for the first time. She she sees Mary through um, two pieces of a uh, sheet. But remember, they never met. No one can know we meet. Yes, I have been instructed. If you speak of it to anyone, I shall deny. I really like that. No one can know we meet. Um, it, it's a very kind of smart way and I had lots of hope when I saw that scene because it was like okay we know they never met but here what they're trying to do in the movie is like trying to say we know they never met but actually they met in secret and you know it kind of gives like um, almost like putting us back in time uh, you know where they might have met so it's quite smart to do it this way but it's really the dialogue that doesn't work at all. The things they're going to say to each other just don't match the letters, don't match the, the relationship. I think that here there's a struggle between their understanding of what happened with what happened in the letters, you know, and as a historian who knows the letters quite well, it's where the frustration can come from. I will regard your words as treason. Am I your subject now? 
So here we have like, you know, right away the, am I your subject now? Like, you know, like kind of the, um, I don't think that Mary being in a situation where she had to flee Scotland uh, to England would have been like um, so impetuous. I think she would have said, yeah, of course I understand. I would not want, you know, to create more problems for you. I think she would have been like in her letters at the time, a bit more docile. How did it come to this? Okay, this part where you have Mary Queen of Scots saying, how did it come to this? <laughs> That's where it gets super annoying because, well, you know, how did it come to this? It came to this because you're writing lots of letters to Philip II or to the enemies of Elizabeth, basically saying, you know, that you know what you're doing. You know that you're, what you're doing is bad. So when you say, how did it come to this? Well, I think you played your part, Mary. So you know why it came to this. So I just think, again, it's not realistic with the situation and with what would have happened if that conversation had taken place. Okay, here we have Elizabeth and Mary finally seeing each other. You have like, you can see that the eagerness from Mary to see, you know, Elizabeth, you see Elizabeth's fear of seeing Mary. And here that what's well done is that it plays on the jealousy that comes from Elizabeth because we can't deny it. All right. And I'm not going to deny it. It's not because, you know, I'm, you know, an Elizabeth fan girl that I'm going to deny that there was some part, um, some jealousy from Elizabeth I towards Mary Queen of Scots. Jealousy because Mary Queen of Scots had the protection from the beginning, had been loved from the beginning, had been treated like the best thing in the world, not only with her mother, but also at the French court. And um, she knows that Mary has a lot more that was denied to her. Elizabeth is the daughter of a woman who was executed that she has to fight for her legitimacy. Elizabeth was not born to rule. She was born to fight. And Mary Queen of Scots was not born to fight, but she was born to rule in many respects. So here I think that it's very nice that we have this kind of anxiety because there's this jealousy. Everyone knows that Mary Queen of Scots is also probably more beautiful. Elizabeth had, you know, some smallpox, as scars from a smallpox in 1562. But here we see the anxiety, we see the fear, and uh, and it's well done. It, it is quite well done. You must have faith. Your brother will keep his word. I have no faith in him. I have only faith in you. Okay, very interesting again, this, um, Elizabeth is obviously here playing Mary because she knows that her brother has no intention to, you know, keep his word. He, he, he really didn't. Um, but here, like, uh, Mary, Mary saying, I have no faith in him, but I have faith in you, is also a big fat lie. She is, she had been plotting against Elizabeth for a long time. She, she doesn't recognize her um, as her equal. Did you come so far at such great risk only to refuse me? That's perfect. Here we have it. Would you have come so far just to refuse me? Of course not. And that's why she never came. <laughs> because she knew she was going to refuse her. She refused her years after years. She couldn't do what Mary was asking her to do. So again, here we have it. Why this meeting could have never happened. So in this scene, you know, the writers have decided to give it to us that this scene is actually nonsense. If you refuse me an army. Say it to my face. And here again, we have Mary, our birth, trying to be strong. You know, if you refuse me an army, say it to my face, don't let me beg you to your back. She would not have said that if she had seen her in person. She's trying to get the help. Is it gonna help? Is, is Elizabeth gonna say, oh, all right, then I'm changing my mind. No. And Mary was really smart. She, and you see it in her letters to Elizabeth. She knew that she had to be careful in the way she would, you know, write to her. So she's, she, even in her letters, sometimes she is bold, but it's a game of like being bold, but also being very submissive. And I don't, I really don't think that Mary face to face would have had the courage to be that bold. Here we have it, a moment of like two women 
two cousins, two queens, two rivals seeing each other and you see the vulnerability, you see you see the emotions. I, I have to say that the acting is absolutely superb. Like, you know, it's not the acting that I'm criticizing. I think I think it, it's it's amazing. As it really is. You are safe here in England. That's all I can offer. They have been abandoned by so many. Okay, here the, the question of safety, you'll be safe here in England. Um, I guess so. <laughs> yes, I guess she's safe. I guess when you're a prisoner, like, yes, I guess you're safe. Um, when Mary says she's been abandoned by so many, <laughs> I quite disagree. You can just look at the letters um, that she's sending back and forth in France and um, in Spain, and you'll see that that's not true. That we could conquer all of those who doubt us. <laughs> Again, this idea that together we could conquer all of us who doubt us. No, they are very much on different teams. Like you have to realize that the Catholic faith for Mary is not something that she has no care about. It's, it's a very huge part of her identity as a queen and as a woman. She does not recognize Elizabeth you know, a, a legitimacy to the throne. And though she has made lots of concessions, and I'll give her that, lots of tolerance in Scotland, you know, giving them, you know, uh, when they, they were at the Reformation in 1560s, her faith is a very important part of who she was. There's no them uniting against the men. It didn't work that way. And it's not what Mary wanted. I know your heart has more within it than the men who counsel you. Mary refers to Elizabeth's heart, and I like it because it refers, you know, in many ways, it echoes Elizabeth's speech, you know, famous speech, I know I have the body but of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and of a king of England too. And she's pretending that the reason why they're in this situation is just because of the men that counseled Elizabeth. And though she has a point that these men were playing a big role, it's not just their doing. It's not just what they were saying. It's not, they're not entirely responsible for their relationships. I believe that the men played you know, a role, but not just these men, the men around Mary as well. The Guises played a big role. The, you know, all these men that had a, a political agenda in France and Spain about England were also poisoning Mary's ears. So here I think it's a bit tough for her to tell her that, you know, oh, you're basically listening to these men, when actually she's been doing the exact same thing. But I have no enmity with you. I have no enmity with you. All right, that is, again, that's when Elizabeth does a big fat lie as well. Of course she does. I mean, there's lots of resentment that has built up since the 1550s, you know, up to 1560s and where they're supposedly meeting up. That is untrue. Of course, she has enmity by the time where they're supposed to meet in 1568. <sighs> Makes no sense. Except to seed rebellion and to deceive me time and time again. Mary here is being kind of unfair um, and at the same time, she's saying the interesting truth. It is true that Elizabeth supported, um, you know, Mary's half brother. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think she's calling her on a bullshit here. And I think she has a point. My protection, you would do well to watch your words. I will not be scolded by my inferior. This is where it goes crazy. So Elizabeth reminds Mary, be careful what you're saying, right? And here she's saying she's calling her. The woman she's seeking, you know, apparently seeking, you know, let's be sisters, let's conquer the world together, let's do, you know, le let's be together against all the men. And then she's saying, you're my inferior. What happened in the writing here? You're inferior. I am a steward, which gives me greater claim to England than you possess. I am a steward. That is the most ridiculous line of the whole movie. It would have been so much more powerful if she had said, I am a Tudor. Because it is through her Tudor connection, her Tudor blood, the fact that she's related to Henry VII, that she has 
a claim to the throne. That she, it means that for Catholic people, she's the rightful queen to England. And here, by saying I'm a Stuart, it kind of like destroys this because the Stuart all Scottish and then have no claim to the English throne. So I thought it was utterly, utterly stupid. And it is where for me, this ruined everything. It ruins the power of... It ruins the power that scene could have had. It's just the bad writing here, the bad script, really, where you have so much potential, where they work so hard to make it like almost the secret meeting, almost like, okay, I'm going to believe it. And then you're like, what, what, what? And it just goes downhill. And it's such a missed opportunity to make this great movie in many ways, in many respects, a fantastic one. And here, Elizabeth, instead of fighting her ground, fighting of who she is, the daughter of Henry VIII, the granddaughter of Henry VII, so she doesn't really understand what she's referring to by, you know, she, being a steward means like greater claim to the throne of England. It's absolutely nonsense. But here she's jo showing her vulnerability. And here we have Elizabeth showing the woman behind the queen. But I don't see why she would choose that moment to be vulnerable. And then she's, you know, she talks to Mary about you're beautiful and stuff. And I thought I was so jealous of you. And she reveals her jealousy. And she said, but there's no envy that I should have because you know that good of a person basically well, I'm not sure that given how Elizabeth usually reacts when she's annoyed by disrespect I don't think she would have done that and so again for me this scene doesn't work overall the movie has very interesting parts the part where you know Mary is going to say to her husband Darnley you know um be my husband he said can I be your master and she's like, my husband. I like that. It's so modern. It's so, it, it, it's so merry like. There are some great parts. There are lots of things that are quite annoying, very modernized, but I can understand and I can back them up and I can, you know, and, and they play on like some rumors that never happened, but whatever, you know, you, you can discuss sources, contemporary sources, but that scene for me is a no-go and is the reason for me for me obviously why it ruined the pleasure of watching Mary Queen of Scots the movie all right that is all for me I, I hope you enjoyed that kind of insight and I explained to you well why this scene is problematic if you have any comments and you want to engage with me on a little debate please leave them down below I'll be happy to respond and thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next video bye